I'm Amelia and I love to share all about making a handmade wardrobe for me and my children. This week I am sharing all of the things I got made in January. So normally I start with what I'm wearing. I'm sure so many of you who watch my videos will already guess what this pattern is or you'll know if you've watched my January plans video. But I thought I would share this a little bit later on in the video and I'll start at the beginning of January with the dress that I wanted to make for my New Year's Eve dress. Now in the end we had a lovely evening at home actually with some very dear family friends. Children had the best time all together, the grown-ups had the best time all together. I think we spent most of the weekend in our pyjamas, so this dress neither got finished nor did it get worn on New Year's Eve, but we did have a great time nonetheless. So after New Year's Eve I did then get this dress finished and I wore it to a lovely friend's 50th birthday party, so it did get its outing eventually. Now the dress is the Fabric Godmother peony dress in a beautiful floral that I bought from Joann's. Now I thought this cotton would be perfect because it has a lovely dark base but because it's cotton I think it will also work in the spring and hopefully into the summer as well. So here it is. It is a lovely floral. I really like these sort of whitish greyish flowers and the daisies that have a slight purplish tint to them. I really 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 like the print of this fabric. It's flowery without being too fussy and I really love the peony pattern. Now you'll see I made another hat. I don't actually think I've made the official peony pattern if you want to call it that because I've hacked it both times I've made it but I think that's the sign of a good pattern when you already thought of the hacks before you've even made the original pattern. So for this one I slash and spread the sleeve pieces to just get a slight puffed sleeve because I did want a short sleeve on this one. I find for myself short sleeves much more wearable. I just pop a cardigan over the top in the winter and then it means that I can wear it in the summer as well and particularly in this cotton. I knew this would be one I'd want to wear all year long. I then used the cuff piece from my new craft house everyday blouse because I know that that works in terms of going around my bicep. It's a good measurement for me and I just gathered the bottom of the sleeve into that cuff piece. Otherwise I made the standard peony, I used the long skirt piece and I did add the ruffle on the bottom of course and that came together really well. Now this was a narrower fabric, uh, quite narrow actually, I can't remember the exact dimensions of it. I'll pop a link to the fabric though in the description box below. It was from Joanne when we visited the US I picked it up over there. So I think in the end I did get three yards of it because I did know I wanted to make a dress and there was very little left from that three yards of fabric. I think the skirt does take a lot, although this time I did decide to make the skirt as it is in the original pattern. The first time I made the peony dress I simply added a gathered skirt. This time I used the more sort of A-line skirt. It has these two darts here which match the darts in the bodice and then that just skims over your hips. Now for my version I did cut a size 10 at the bust, I graded to a 12 at the waist and then I left it at a size 12 because the ease in the finished garment measurements looked like it would be fine over my hips and it is. It just skims my hips but it's not too tight and actually it's a lovely fit across the bust and the waist as well. If I wanted to make it a much more fitted dress I could definitely uh, size down one size but as it is I really like the slightly more relaxed fit. There's a nice amount of ease in it and I felt very comfortable wearing that at a birthday party. It was sort of elevated enough with a little pair of heeled boots and yet it felt comfortable enough to enjoy a lovely meal with some friends. Now the next thing I made for myself actually took a surprisingly long time. It is this dress here. Now it is based on a simplicity pattern and that is the simplicity S9700. Now this is a vintage pattern but it is available. Simplicity have reissued it and I bought this because I really love a dress by Aline, the Gabriella dress. I've loved that for a very long time. I think you'll know I've mentioned it before. I did go and try it on in store and it just did not suit me. So I wanted to make a version for myself. Now the thing I like about the Gabriella dress is there isn't a collar stand. It's like a 70s style flat collar that gets attached straight onto the bodice and then I loved this zip down the front and the pockets as well. So I wanted to find a pattern that sort of mimicked that as closely as possible and when I came upon this 1970s vintage simplicity pattern I knew it was going to be a winner. However, obviously I did not want to make the jumpsuit so what I did do was I found the point of the waist where I needed the waist to sit and near to where the waist measurements were on the pattern and then I simply cut it off at the waist and I made sure I found a zip that fit those dimensions as well. And then all I did was add a gathered skirt. It really was quite straightforward. However, putting the bodice together was a little tricky and I did come across a few problems in terms of turning this jumpsuit into a dress. Now I absolutely loved sewing with this denim. This denim is from Sew Me Sunshine. It sewed up beautifully. It went through my faff very, very easily. 
and that wasn't a problem at all. The top stitching came out really nicely. I did decide to do the top stitching in a navy because I just really love the classic lines of this dress. I haven't sewn with denim before, so I didn't want to mess with the top stitching thread on this project, although if I make it again, I might well get a bit more brave with my top stitching choice. So this part came together beautifully. The instructions actually were fine in terms of putting in the zip. I obviously had to amend the zip instructions slightly. It is a faced zip here, you'll see the facing on the inside so I just obviously had to cut the facing off at the waist measurements that I'd used for the front bodice pieces as well and that went in beautifully actually it was the instructions were fine it went in really easily where I came across a problem was when I added the skirt because obviously with the jumpsuit the zip goes down a lot further because it is quite a fitted bodice I realized I might have problems taking this on and off if my zip finishes here at the waist. So what I decided to do was by this point I had closed up the side seam but I reopened the side seam here and inserted a long side seam zipper here underneath the arm and going down into the top of the gathered skirt just to give me plenty of room to get this on and off because I did prefer the look of the fitted bodice. I didn't want to take out anything from the seam allowance or anything. Uh, so I did just decide to add in a zip into the side seam and that works perfectly. It did mean I had to sacrifice my pockets, but that's okay. Now the only thing I would say is I put on the cuff pieces and I absolutely love the cuff. My machine would not go through all this fabric so I could not put on the two buttonholes. I did try but it did not want to play ball. So if anyone's got a tip for putting buttonholes on thick denim, do let me know below. I could have done hand sewn buttonholes but by this point I think this project had taken me about two weeks. I mean, it did happen in the holidays when I had the children at home, so my sewing time was very limited. And I was enjoying the process of sewing this one slowly. I loved taking my time over the details and really making sure that it looked beautiful on the inside as well as on the outside. So for example, I did finish off the hem with a beautiful bias binding instead of just hemming it normally because I wanted that to have a really lovely clean finish. Uh, like I say with the top stitching I really took my time so that was fine but by the time I got to the cuffs I was ready to have the dress finished and wear it so I decided not to risk messing up the cuff by keeping trying with the button also I did only put one button on and I had to make it a horizontal rather than a vertical buttonhole which just means the cuffs are a little on the snug side that you probably see they are quite small. Now with wear, obviously denim gives a little bit and those have given a little bit already. I'm finding they're a little bit more comfortable to wear now but I do have some of this denim left in my stash so I might at some point go in and remake those cuffs just a little bit larger and try again with the buttonholes. They're fine as they are and on the pattern instructions you can see that they are quite firm fitting cuffs to sort of get that real puffy sleeve look that I wanted anyway but they are probably just slightly on the tight side. I did make a size 10 which fits with my finished garment measurements. I think I come out at about a size 14 in Simplicity McCall patterns but I always make a size 10 although I do check the finished garment measurements first and the size 10 usually comes out about right. I love the fit of this, there's plenty of ease in the finished garment measurements. It feels relaxed uh, and a nice loose fit but still fitted enough that I feel like it's quite flattering to wear and very comfortable as well. So I absolutely love this dress. I did decide to go with the long sleeves in the end. I did toy with short sleeves, but I really like that I did it with the long sleeves because I think it will go into the spring quite well. And then I can obviously roll them up a little bit if I want to and wear it as a three quarter length sleeve dress with the sleeves rolled up. So I think it should still have enough versatility to wear it into the spring. But let's be honest, I really loved making this pattern. I absolutely adore this dress. I think I'm gonna have to make another one anyway. And the next time I make it, I might make it with a short sleeve. So watch this space. I'm loving wearing this dress. I loved making it. 100% would recommend make this one. It's fun to wear. So that was two dresses that I made and obviously I hadn't had enough of dresses, I decided to make a third dress. Now this one I had a whole video about last week about the making of my perfect winter dress. I am so thrilled with this one. I've worn it so much already. It really is so, so very, very cozy and warm. It feels lovely to wear and I have worn it a lot already, particularly in the weekend, because then I don't have to cycle anywhere and worry about getting it caught in my chain and things. But yeah, I absolutely love it. I am in love with the color, 
I wasn't sure about this green initially because it's not really a colour I've ever worn before but I absolutely love it so that's really cool too. Fabric is from Somi Sunshine, it's a viscose soft knit and it just is so beautifully soft and warm to wear so definitely recommend this one. For those of you who haven't seen last week's video this is a mashup of two patterns, it is the Tilly and the Buttons Freya top that I merged with my True Bias Zoe pattern. Now True Bias put up a blog on their website all about merging their two patterns, so the Nico top, which is similar to the Freya, and the Zoe dress. Now I don't have the Nico top pattern, but it is very similar to the Tilly and the Buttons Freya, so I just decided to use that because I've already got it in my stash. I blended those two patterns together and ended up with this beautiful long sleeved jersey dress. I love it. I don't think there's much more to say than that. If you want to see more details about how I blended those two patterns and how I sort of sewed it up and the process I went through to get to this perfect dress, then do watch last week's video. I'll link it in the description box below in case you want to go and see that one. But I'm so pleased with this month's makes. I definitely went a bit slower this month. I did not make as many things as I have before, but I am so pleased with what I did make and they have definitely become wardrobe staples already, which is what I really want from my sewing. So there's my Zoe, Freya, Froey, Zaya, let's go with Froey. There's my Froey dress, love it. I'm really glad to have found my perfect winter dress and I'm looking forward to playing around with this pattern a little bit more, seeing if I can perhaps make it to a short sleeved dress or play with the neckline a little bit. Someone did mention cutting the front on the fold instead of in two pieces. I think that's done just to give the dress that beautiful sort of A-line shape, but you could definitely cut it on the fold if you wanted to. So I'm looking forward to playing with these two patterns a little bit more and seeing what else I can create from the Freya and Zoe patterns. Right, before I mention this pattern, I'll briefly mention something I made for my son, and that is a neon jumper for a party he was <laughs> going to, uh, and it turned out so cute. I love this fabric, it's so bright and colorful. I would definitely wear this myself if I was brave enough. He absolutely loves it. Uh, he's been wearing it a lot. It is the Rowan Tee by Miss Yuzu pattern, so it is meant to be a t-shirt pattern, and this is a French terry. It's not a particularly warm French terry, it's quite thin but it's fine over a t-shirt as like a little extra layer. He was running around like crazy anyway, so he was not cold and he loved wearing it. I really like the Rowan tee. I like sort of the dropped sleeves. It looks really nice on my boys. Comes together extremely quickly and it's free. So you can't get better than that. The only thing I would say is the sleeves do come out quite long. I do end up hemming them up quite a lot for my boys. It is a good fit on them. So my son is 10 and I made him the size 10, fits perfectly. A little on the big side, but I'd rather that than it's too small. So <laughs> there you have it. That was a very quick make for him. I can't remember where I got that from. It's a new shop to me, uh, but I'll pop it in the description box below if you want to go and find some of that fabric for yourself. I just love all the colors on that and he loved wearing it. So that's fantastic. Okay, so the last thing I made this month and this really is quite hot off the press. I finished putting these poppers onto it this morning once the house had risen and I could get the hammer out and pop these poppers in. I didn't want to do it while the children were asleep last night. So it did wait till this morning, <laughs> but I love it. This is the Pogo Nip Pullover by Friday Pattern Company. I saw it and I saw this fabric and I just thought it has to be. I spend a lot of my week in leggings and a cozy jumper. You will have seen me wearing my Megan Nielsen Jarrah quite a lot on these videos recently. And I thought this fabric and this jumper would be perfect for those chilly mornings when I have to jump on the bike and I need an extra layer to keep me nice and toasty. Now this fabric is from So Me Sunshine. They do have it, or they did have it, in two or three different colorways. So I'll link it in the box below in case they've got any left. But I think I have also seen relatively similar fabrics available from Fabric Godmother um, and a couple of other places. So I'll see if I can pop links to those below if they're still available. Now when this arrived, I absolutely love the outside of the fabric. It's very, very cozy and soft and lovely but the inside is slightly harder to the touch. It is a sweat in it, so it's not bad. And I think it would be fine in the winter if you were wearing it over a long sleeve top, but I just have quite sensitive skin and I was worried I would find that a little hard on my skin. So I didn't make this straight away. I have had a little bit of time thinking about what I was going to do. And you'll remember, I think last week I shared that I bought some black bamboo jersey. So when I was pondering one night what I was going to do with this pogonip, I decided to line every single piece with this black 
bamboo jersey. Now it is quite a thin jersey so that's fine and in the end what I decided to do was simply to interline the fabric. So that just means I took my say sleeve piece, I cut exactly the same from the bamboo jersey, I lay one on top of the other and I simply surged around the edges to uh, make one new piece of fabric which had this on one side and hopefully you can see the bamboo jersey on the other and then I just sewed it up as per the pattern instructions treating each piece as one single piece rather than as a lining and a main fabric. Now that worked really really well does mean it's a super cozy make but actually that's exactly what I wanted. I can imagine wearing this right now on my bike in the winter as an extra cozy layer under my coat but also on those spring nights or even summer nights when it's just that little bit cold, throwing it on over a summer dress, I think it will be absolutely perfect. Now, I love the collar. I ended up putting four poppers on. I don't know if you can see them. There were only three poppers on the pattern itself. I really wanted four because I like wearing my collar open and where the third popper sat was just a little bit too high for me. So I decided to put four poppers on and I really like the way that that sits now with those four poppers on it. And I did use these metal poppers. I just thought they went really, really nicely with the fabric. Now I made a couple of changes to this pattern. First of all, I wasn't going to be messing about with welt pockets on this thick fabric. I would love to make welt pockets in another pogo knit because actually I am missing not having anywhere to sort of put my hands <laughs> to keep them cozy and warm but I think at some point maybe I'll put a kangaroo pocket on the front of this if I really really want to because that would be quite easy to add later on but for now I think it's fine it's just a lovely warm cozy layer and I didn't want to mess about with the welt pockets but like I say future versions I may well include those now the other thing I wasn't sure about with this pattern was the cuffs and the bottom hem of the jumper I don't love to have things that cinch in just before the widest part of my body, which is my hips and my bottom, but I do love a slightly longer line jumper. So what I decided to do was to extend the bottom hem piece by about four centimeters. So here is my hem piece for the Pogonet pullover, and you'll just see I've added about four centimeters to the width of that piece. And then all that I did was cut two as per the pattern instructions. I sewed them together, sewed them onto the bottom of the pullover, and I just did not add the elastic. So it gives me a little bit more length to the pullover, and it just makes it a lovely relaxed fit, which is exactly what I wanted. I didn't want anything too fitted. I just wanted a lovely, big, relaxed fit jump over pullover that I could pop on to keep me cozy. So that's what I did with that piece. I did extend it by four centimeters. And then because I wanted to be consistent across the pattern, I did the same with the sleeve pieces. And I did elasticate these, so you'll see there's a little bit of elastic in there just to keep them nice and cozy. I made those wider. I didn't like the narrow cuffs. It's the one thing about the pattern that I really didn't like. Um, I prefer my cuffs to be wider. It's just the way I prefer them to sit. So I measured my elastic, which is 1.5 inches, and then I decided to add that four centimeters to the pattern piece here too. And I simply sewed the elastic into this piece before sewing it on to the sleeve because I lined the sleeve fully. So that's what I did with the cuff. Oh, the only other thing I did was to add an inch to the sleeves. I always find for me that Friday Pattern Company pattern sleeves come up short. Now I a medium in this which perfectly fits my measurements I think it's for a 35 to 37 inch bust which is mine exactly 29 to 30 inch waist which is me exactly and then the hip measurement for this doesn't matter so much so I did make a medium it's come out with plenty of ease I don't know if you can see that there's plenty of ease in that pattern it is lovely and oversized and roomy but I know having made medium sized Friday pattern company patterns before that the sleeves come up short on me I haven't had this with any other patterns. Does anyone have this with Friday Pattern Company patterns or is it just me and I've got weird arms? I don't know. Anyway, before I sewed it up, I decided to add an inch to the sleeves and I'm so glad I did. I don't know if you can see where they fall. They fall perfectly on me with that extra inch added. I didn't want them to be riding up. I really wanted to have my wrists covered, especially when I'm on the bike and things. So with that extra four centimeters in the cuff and the extra inch in the sleeves, they sit at the perfect place on me. So I'm really glad I added that extra length because I think they would have come up too short if I hadn't done that. So like I say, I made a size medium. I changed the cuffs. I changed the hem. And I didn't do the welt pockets. And I also did not do the pocket on the back because again, in this fabric, I just didn't think... Uh, it needed it. I thought it'd be too big to fit in the pocket anyway, and I just wasn't going to use it. So I left that off as well. I think that's it. Those are all my changes, and I 
love it it is so cozy lined in that bamboo jersey it feels very snugly i'm just wearing a t-shirt underneath it today a little black t-shirt uh, i was wearing just a vest earlier when i went out on the bike because it is very warm lined in the bamboo jersey so i'm so so pleased with it somebody mentioned last week that they didn't prefer the collar i've actually found it fine it was lovely on the bike this morning you can sort of snuggle up and into it and then it does open up really nicely so i'm pleased with it I like how it turned out. I did take a lot of time putting in the collar to make sure it really lined up across this seam line here and with stitching in the ditch and things. I was as careful as I could be so that I get a good result. It was a little tricky sewing with this fabric because it is so fluffy. Uh, but I think overlooking all the edges first actually served me quite well because I could really see to line everything up and to make sure it was really neat and as well finished as I could make it. So just a few makes from me this month, but my goal this year is to really take my time over my makes and to make things that are really going to become wardrobe staples. I was really missing some winter dresses in my wardrobe, so I'm really pleased to have made a few of those this month and they're getting a lot of wear. I'm also really pleased with this because for my everyday life, I think this will become a real wardrobe staple as well. So I hope you enjoyed seeing those makes. Do let me know in the comments below what you've been making this winter. Have you been making all the cozy things as well or are you looking ahead to your spring sewing? I went on a lovely trip to Charcat Fabrics yesterday in London with the lovely Catherine, who is Soverton Makery. She introduced me to that shop, which was very dangerous because they have the most beautiful selection of Liberty fabrics. So we did make a couple of purchases each. I'm sure she'll share her fabric soon, and I'm looking forward to sharing mine in a future video because I have some gorgeous spring plans for my lovely new fabric. So for now, I'm going to sign off. I hope you have a lovely week ahead full of lots of happy sewing, and I'm very much looking forward to sharing more of my sewing with you in next week's video. I'll see you then. Goodbye!